In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Trinity Sunday, which we observe today, comes out of the controversies over the nature of Jesus in the third and fourth centuries. The answer to the Arians who thought that Jesus was perfect, union, you, perfect human, but not God, was that there are three persons or manifestations in this one God. And the Trinity is the relation, the relationship among them. Jesus is braces the, the divine and human together. The feast was finally extended to the Christian church in the West in the year 1334. There's a ton of mystery about the doctrine of the Trinity. And we, we, we really don't know how to talk about it. Some people seem entirely clear. Others are confused and still others could care less. The great Saint Augustine used a very simple example to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. His example was that of a tree. The root is wood, the trunk is wood, and the branches are wood. All wood, three different kinds of wood, one tree. St. Patrick, of course, used the shamrock. And I like to teach children about an apple, the core, the seed, and the peel. One apple, one fruit. It's easy to understand why our lecture, lectionary chooses the account of Jesus giving the last great commission to his disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the few scriptures with a direct and clear reference to the Trinity. This threefold charge, of course, is what the young church came to understand as its mission by the time that Matthew wrote his gospel. And it's hard to prove that this was what Jesus was about since he came to call his Jewish brothers and sisters back to Torah observance. The Catechism of the Episcopal Church in our Book of Common Prayer does not have a definition of the Trinity that I can find. And the only reference of the Trinity at all as a third person is not even mentioned in the Nicene Creed. So if it's hard for you to wrap your head and your brain around what the Trinity means, you're in good company. Sorry. What I can say and understand about the nature of the Trinity is that the Trinity is about relationship. 
Listen to St. Paul's instruction to the church in Corinth. Paul himself had sent the gospel to the people of Corinth, but his relationship with the church there had broken down. Friction and rough times had come about. And that was followed by a disruption. By the grace of God, their relationship had been repaired. And Paul now writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Last Wednesday would have been my husband Russ's birthday. Naturally, that was a hard day for me. I thought of all the things I wish I had said to him when I had the chance. And now can't say. I did a couple of other things. I canceled going to a reception to which I was invited and made plans to spend the afternoon with an ailing friend. Also, I called my good friend Wendy, who was 99 years old, and I made plans to save her. As a hospice chaplain from 2008, to two, from 2005 to 2009, my responsibilities were as much to the families of my patients as they were to the patients themselves. We advised our clients and family members that there are important words that need to be said while there is still time to say them. What are those words? I love you. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Goodbye. Believers throughout the centuries have tried in vain to describe the nature of God. One theologian said that trying to describe the nature of God is like a bunch of oysters trying to understand a ballerina. <laughs> we simply do not have the equipment to talk about something so beyond us. But the doctrine of the Trinity speaks of relationship. Relationship of the three persons. And we do understand something about relationships. From our earliest days, we are bound up in human connections. In infancy, we know ourselves as connected to our mothers, and then, in most cases, to our fathers and siblings. Then others enter our lives and our relationships multiply. By the time we reach adulthood, 
We know the value of relationships and we have experienced something of their complexity. Whenever we first experience the loss of a valuable relationship, the shock and pain of that loss teaches us the fragility of relationships. And we never, ever forget that lesson. Jesus' disciples had to come to grips with the fact that he was not coming back to earth. And we are wise to do the same. The gospel texts have very little to say about what Jesus' followers said to him as they came to realize that he was leaving them permanently. I wonder, don't you? what those things were. In one post-resurrection experience, Jesus asked John, do you love me? Why does he have to ask that of John, his very best friend? I suggest we worry less about the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we pay more attention to the precious relationships in our own lives while we still have the opportunity. Say what you need to say to those you love while you still have the chance. The time will come soon and possibly unexpectedly when you can't. I love you. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Goodbye. Amen. Amen.